Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to tell you about how I found my own cancer in med school. Basically what happened, I'm just gonna jump right into it. A quick little catch up. I can send this to people when I, cause I'm, I'm already getting tired of telling this story. So tell it one more time on here. Uh, I need some chapstick. Wait, give me one second. Also, I know I look worn out. I'm, I, and I, I am a little sick right now. Um, not because of the cancer though, it's just a cold and yeah, I'm not in sleeping like the best. So we've got the eye bags are making a comeback. Uh, okay, sorry, I said I would jump into it, so I will. Last year, I don't even know if I said this to you last year because I barely ever post now that I'm in med school. I was at an ultrasound class because our school teaches us point of care ultrasound starting first year. And the first thing that we ever did was do the thyroid because the thyroid is such an easy little structure to ultrasound. So we were doing that on each other and I got on the table and my friend put up the little probe to my neck we were looking at it and I was like what's wrong with mine mine's bumpy like there's something weird there's something weird in mine so we called over the teacher and she looked at it and she said oh that's a nodule you have a nodule on your thyroid and I was like oh okay and she's like yeah we find incidental findings in here all the time like so many people have gallstones stuff like that she was like yeah so you should probably you know we'll send a picture of it to student health and they'll probably tell you to like follow up with your doctor like outside of school. The problem was I was about to turn 26 and my primary care doctor was in California. So I was kind of in this weird space where I couldn't really do anything but get blood work and then wait to figure out what I was gonna do for new insurance. And I got blood work done. My thyroid levels were totally normal. And so I just kind of put it off because the thing is like I kept making jokes about it too And I even talked to my doctor in California about this. They were like even if it's cancer, it's thyroid cancer So it like, you know that moves so slow and I was you know, so I, I joked about it for a year I joked about it for so long. I finally got my health insurance figured out finally made time I went and finally got an actual like professional ultrasound done like a month ago and you know, I just went there and then I left and I played pickleball with my friends and while I was playing pickleball, which was fun, that was like my second time I ever playing, it was a good day. I got an email saying that I had a test result on my chart and I opened it and it said, oh, three of the six nodules that you have are like RADS5, which is like the most suspicious for something bad, cancer. And your lymph nodes look bad. We think that this person might have thyroid cancer that has metastasized to the cervical lymph nodes bilaterally. She needs biopsy. So I left pickleball because I was a little stressed out. Like I told my friends and they were like, do we, like, we'll go home with you, whatever. And I was like, no, 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 I just, I need a second. So I came home, like completely broke down. I was just so confused and it scared me to know that like, none of my doctors knew this. I just knew this and I had to figure out what to do. I freaked out and I emailed someone at my school um, who, like, one of the doctors at my school, who I know pretty well, and he called me, and he calmed me down. He was like, listen, your lymph nodes could look weird for any reason, like, have you been sick recently? Who knows what's going on, but I have a friend who's an endocrinologist. I'll call her tomorrow morning, and we'll try and get you an appointment for as soon as possible. And this was a Thursday night, and they were able to get me a biopsy appointment for Monday morning. Now you need a little bit more background. You might be wondering, Sally, where are you? What is this? This is my home. This is my new home because Nina and I did also break up. Uh, we broke up like two months ago or a month and a half ago or we went on a break and then we ended up not coming back from it. And so my mom had surprised me by getting a plane ticket to come out and help me move that weekend that ended up being the weekend between when I got the ultrasound and got the biopsy. So my mom ended up being there with me, uh, to, and she stayed longer for like a week extra um, because we went and got the biopsy, which was super weird and also very emotional. I would highly recommend, even if you're a med student, even if you're not scared that you have cancer or run into this in the future, when you go to a biopsy appointment, just take go with someone if you can. Like, because I thought I would be completely fine when they put like the local anesthetic and I had like the epinephrine. Like I was, I was pretty overwhelmed. It didn't hurt. It was just like... An emotional th it was a lot it was a lot to go through we get the biopsy and while i'm with the endocrinologist she's like okay listen i can kind of feel while i'm doing it that i do think that you have thyroid cancer i do think that it has spread to your lymph nodes so you're gonna need a thyroidectomy and you're gonna need a bilateral uh lateral cervical dissection 
She's like, but usually when people say that, I mean the whole neck. You only need to have it down here. So probably just like a, probably just a simple, you know, couple hours in the OR and then you'll go home that same day and uh, you'll need like a week off of school. And I was like, okay, like, this is what I was expecting. I've mentally prepared to have cancer. I've been joking about it a lot. Um, yeah, so that, then I, I got, yeah, I, and I, there is, okay, we'll talk about how I feel later. Then I have to go to the surgery consults, and this, at this point, my mom had left because, like, she can't stay here forever, and she also knew that she was gonna have to come back because I'm gonna need surgery, right? Then I went to the surgeons. I went to two surgeons for consultations. The first one was a, she did a general surgery residency and then specialized in thyroid and adrenals. So she only does thyroid and adrenals and mostly thyroid. And that's been like, she did that, she did like, she subspecialized in it and she does that all day, every day. The other person was an ENT um, who, when I looked into what she does most of the time, it was ear stuff. So I ended up going with the first one. She said, <laughs> she was like, no, 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 no. It's not just down here. We have to do all the way up here because that she's like I saw your stuff does not look good we'll get a CT scan just to see if you know if we can stop anywhere but most likely we need to we want to just get it all out and getting it all out is going to take longer than a couple hours it's going to take if I were to do it all at once it would take over eight hours so or over six hours or just a really long time she's like what I want to do is I want to do your whole thyroid and one half of your neck and then come back four weeks later and we'll do the other side of your neck I have never felt so comfortable around a doctor. I trust this lady with my life. So I'm going with her. I'm, not, I'm excited. I really like her. She's great. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, that's the whole story. My surgery is on December 6th. I'm getting it done at Cooper. Um, yeah. And so as far as school goes, like what will this look like for my school schedule? Um, basically, I am finishing up our GI endo repro block. Um, next week we have our exam and then I'll come back or like, sorry, we'll come back from our exam week. We'll have our first day of neuro block. And then that Wednesday I will, um, go get my surgery. I'll have to stay overnight in the hospital, hopefully for only one night. And then I will be out until after winter break. And I, I do plan to come back to school after winter break and kind of figure it out from there. I don't know exactly what that'll look like. I have a lot that I have to figure out. I'm trying to keep all my options open, but the school's been really, really kind about it. And so I know I'm at least finishing GI. So if I had to, if I had to take a year off and come back next year, I would just come back and do neuroblock and then take boards. So that's honestly not even that bad either. I don't know what I would do in the year. Maybe some more research, maybe travel. I don't know. I've never been in a rush. As far as how I'm feeling, I'm really tired. I'm really tired. It has been very stressful and very emotional. You know, I've had days where I've really needed a lot of support and I've gotten a lot of support from like my mom ordering me groceries or my friends like bringing me food and coming with me to appointments. It can be really overwhelming. But another way I like to look at it is I like to think, okay, if I have to have cancer, First of all, I'm glad it's me and not someone else because clearly I can handle this. <laughs> I was built for this. But also, if I have to have cancer, I'm gonna learn as much from it as I can. And I'm going to use this however I can to become a better doctor. I'm taking note of things people have said that have made me feel better. I'm learning what it's like to be a patient, what it's like to have to spend all day on the phone and figure out insurance stuff and go to appointments. I had no idea how much of a full-time job it is to be a patient. There's definitely a lot that I'm getting out of this experience, and I think it's making me a more empathetic person. And I know that I'm going to come out of this stronger than I was before. Getting a scary diagnosis really makes you think about the things in your life that are precious to you. And I'm really happy to report that med school is one of those things for me. Like, I want to be here. My school said, if you need time, take it now. Like, you, you can, you know, take whatever time you need. But I like, th I like being there and I like learning stuff and I don't want to miss out. So that, it was a cool thing to learn about myself. Like, I know now for sure that I really, really, really do want to be a doctor. So um, part of me is grateful for that. All right, that is all. That is all for today. I hope um, you enjoyed this update. <laughs> all right, bye.